Hey guys, it's Alyssa here and today I shall be filming my February and March wrap up. So here's the thing, I already technically filmed this so I don't have a TBR jar pick to be picked, I already picked it, but I got a new phone and I frankly just really, really, really desperately wanted to film on it. I also got new glasses, so I'm just like feeling like a whole new person. The glasses broke months ago and i haven't bothered to get new ones i was like using old pair so first let's talk about the two books that i read in february obviously i didn't do a february wrap-up because what was the point when you only read two books in february there isn't much point in doing a wrap-up one of the two books that i read in february was born to run by jason walls this is the second book in a graphic novel series and it's a trilogy i believe and it was really good i gave it five out of five stars it was a really good sequel and i'm excited to finish the series it definitely has a main character that is neurodivergent i would say the author hasn't come out and said that the character has anything specific there's that representation i haven't seen any reviews about it being negative representation i enjoy it i think it has a great plot and the characters are really great and I love it, so I highly recommend it. The other book that I read in February was The Body Lies by Joe Baker, and wow, was this another spectacular book. Trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape, not just those things, but there is an on-page rape scene. So um, even if you think, oh, okay, I can handle that, just so you know, because I didn't know going in. Content isn't triggering for me, so I wasn't like, ah. But just so you know, that does happen. I gave it a five out of five stars. This was a different type of thriller in the sense where the whodunit isn't that surprising. You go into it kind of knowing what's gonna happen, but the author manages to build anticipation so well and keeps it so suspenseful throughout the whole thing. Normally I like to not know what's gonna happen, but because because of how it was written it was really well executed it was really interesting because like you never really know the main character's name she's just referred to as she and it's just so interesting and i found the main character to be so likable and so strong and so like i'm gonna do things and i'm like i'm gonna do them on my own and like so strong and like but also at parts like vulnerable and i just really loved her. She was great, honestly. And I've never been in a thriller where I've like loved the main character as much as I loved the main character in this book. Now on to the books I read in March. I read a total of nine books. Wow. If you've seen my previous content, you might know that Audiobookathon was in March and I was a huge success at it. So I'll tell you what challenges I completed, what books I completed. My reading started with Audiobookathon, so I'm just gonna go in the order that I read the books. I did wanna give you a few stats of my reading though. I ended up reading a total of six audiobooks, which is a lot. I ended up reading a total of 2,356 pages. Now, I don't know how that compares for me with pages because I've never started like counting pages before. This is like a new thing, but I kind of am thinking about continuing it. I read four five-star books, four four-star books, and one three-star book, so it was a really great reading month for me. First book that I finished was actually my TBR jar pick for February and that was Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. I knew I wanted to get to this. I didn't want to push it off and like put it on like my shelf again and then have to like repick it. I just wanted to finish it. So this was the very first book that I actually finished for Audiobookathon. It didn't complete any challenges but I was listening to it almost solely as an audiobook and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Gave it a five out of five stars. I love sister relationships where they don't hate each other you know what i'm saying i just really loved the sister relationship in this i really related to eleanor a lot as a person because she's such an empathetic person she always puts other people's feelings before her own and i just related to that a lot i thought this was absolutely so enjoyable easy to follow and might be better than pride and prejudice not gonna lie carl brandon takes my heart i would marry that man in a heartbeat just saying just saying and then if you watch my audiobookathon blog you will know that i ended up just being wild and picking another tbr jar pick I read two classics this month which is pretty insane 
and the book that I picked and read, which was another book for Audiobookathon, was Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare, and I really enjoyed this. I gave it four to five stars, I think. Yeah, four to five stars. This was fun, entertaining. I thought it was a typical Shakespeare comedy. For being one of the few Shakespeare books that I've read, I enjoyed it. There were points where I was actually laughing out loud. The next book that I finished was my lowest rated book of the month, and that was Poro Investigates by Agatha Christie. So this was a different type of Poro novel because instead of just focusing on one mystery, it was a bunch of short mysteries. And I ended up giving this three out of five stars. It was enjoyable. I wouldn't say that it was bad or anything like that, obviously. If it was bad, I would have given it like two or one star. But because the mysteries were so short, they weren't that fleshed out. And at first I didn't know that there were gonna be short mysteries. So when I got to the second one, when I was listening to it, I was like, what is going on? Like, what did I miss? I think the last two were really enjoyable for me. I think it was a decent read and I am looking forward to reading more Agatha Christie in the future. Next book that I read was a reread for me, which is crazy. I reread two books this month. Who is she? And that was one of my favorite books of all time. And that is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It stands as a five out of five stars. Can't be beat. I love this series. I listened to this on audio for the first time. The first time that I read it, I listened to it. I just read it physically. So I highly recommend the audiobook. It's fantastic, but I don't know which method I prefer of reading it. I think both are really good, and I think both combined makes for the ultimate reading experience. And the next one was again the other reread that I did for the month, and that was Good Morning, Good Night, Little Pep Talks from Me to You by Lynn Manuel Miranda. He narrates this, and it stands as a five out of five stars. Somehow I managed to do like almost exactly a year apart of a reread of that and then like three or four years of a reread almost exactly of this. I don't know how I managed that. It stands as a five out of five stars. I think it's great. I love it. I love getting little pep talks and I would love to own this one day and just like have it on my bedside table and just like read it whenever I need help because you know what? We all be needing help. We all be needing little pep talks to make ourselves feel better. We all need to be hyped up we all be needing it. Like, don't lie to me and say you don't need it because you, you do need to be hyped up. So, yeah. So those were all the books that I read for Audiobookathon. I'm going to tell you which challenges I completed. The first challenge was to listen to a book with a full cast narration. I listened to two, which were Illuminate and Twelfth Night. The next one was to be narrated by the author. And for that, I counted Good Morning, Good Night. Next one was a nonfiction book. And for that, I counted Good Morning and Good Night. The next one was a short audiobook, which could count as multiple books that I read. Good Morning, Good Night, Twelfth Night, and also Poro Investigates were all under six hours, which was like the time limit that I had set. The next challenge was to read a favorite book, whether that be yours or someone else's, and for that I picked Illuminae. The next challenge was to be narrated by a celebrity, and for that I'm going with Poro Investigates because obviously it was narrated by the actor who plays him. The last challenge was one of the host's favorite, and for that I went with Illuminae. So I completed all the challenges. It was a very successful audiobookathon. I had a wonderful, wonderful time. I'm so excited for the next round. Thank you if you're watching this, Krista, for letting me be a host. I had a great time, and it was just so fun. Like. I had a great time and it got me back into reading and just a wonderful time. Next book that I read was actually a physical TBR book. Say what? <laughs> I have such a small uh, physical TBR now. I think it's now three books. But um, one of them was The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I gave this four stars, like four to five stars, because this was so freaking funny. Like, so funny for being written in like 1980 this was hilarious like not just like <laughs> not like <laughs> like <laughs> i was laughing out loud that's how funny this was i didn't expect that i expected this to have like some type of problem frankly because it was written in the 80s so i was like oh <laughs> But this was so good. It was so enjoyable. I definitely could see myself re reading the rest of the series and continuing on because it was so fun. Um, I probably wouldn't give it a full five stars, like somewhere between four and five, because it did get a little like confusing with like the sci-fi elements of it. But like, I don't think that's really the point. I think it's like more like 
the characters and the humor and like the adventures not so much the specifics of the adventures if you get what i'm saying if you like funny stuff i really recommend this the next book that i read is lock every door by riley sager and this was a book i had on my radar but like i wasn't necessarily planning on reading but then i saw it through libby and i was like ooh we gonna do it. I never read a book by Riley Sager in its entirety. I did read, I tried reading The Last Time I Lied and I couldn't get into it. I heard really good things about this one so I was like oh, I'll give this one a shot and I loved it. Five out of five stars. Oh my god it was so good. It had me hooked like that like from the very 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 beginning and that's the key to a good thriller is if from the first page I'm into it that I'm sticking with it because what's the point of reading the thriller that I ain't into from the very beginning? Like they're supposed to keep me engaged. And if I'm not engaged from the very beginning, then what's the point of even reading it, right? Exactly. I love this. It was fun. Definitely had a weird ending. Um, a lot of people didn't like it, I guess. I don't know, but I don't know what my taste is in thrillers yet. I'm still trying to figure it out, but if you find yourself having similar tastes to me, I, I really enjoyed this one. The next book that I read was an ebook that I got from NetGalley. I know I had made the promise this year to not really get any books from NetGalley, but I couldn't resist because this was based on Anne of Green Gables. And that was If I Couldn't Be Anne. And this was an adorable little picture book about if Anne of Green Gables couldn't be Anne of Green Gables. And it was so cute. I love Anne of Green Gables so much. <sighs> Of her. I gave this four stars. What is there to say about picture books other than they're cute and like I wish I was a kid when I had read it. Very last book that I read was a free book that I got on my Kindle and which is shocking because that never happens. I never read things on my Kindle and that was a shot glass confessional by Cyrus Parker. I previously read Cyrus Parker's other two books and they are some of my favorite poetry books hands down like so 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 good. They are one of my favorite poets, no doubt about it. They just have a way of making me feel things, even if I haven't experienced them before. I don't know how. I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I thought it was good. I didn't think all of it was good, but a lot of it was really good. I definitely highlighted a fair amount of them, and I'm excited to read more from them in the future. I think they have a book coming out this year, and... They're just gonna be staying one of my favorite poets, I guess. Those are all the books that I read in March. Sorry if maybe I was a little fast on what I said about these, but again, I've already filmed this video, so I don't really wanna go into it again. The book that I picked for my classics TBR jar was A Room With A View by E.M. Forster. I did start it, I'm on page 12, I think. I'm not even enough into it to even know the story. Um, I had watched this movie a million years ago and I'd loved it when I was like, 13, 12, 10, I don't know. And it was really good. So I'm excited to read it. But I'm kind of being a little bit saucy. I'm feeling saucy and I feel like I need something that's gonna make me happy because right now I'm like not, I'm like miserable right now. <laughs> you may not think it watching me, but that's why I'm filming this video to make myself feel better because I always feel better after filming. I think I'm gonna pick another one. Why not? Why not pick another one? Why not pick another one? We have nothing better to do. This is I changed around my shelf since I last filmed. This is now all of my unread classics. Here we go, we're picking another one, why not? I got no plans for this month except probably to participate in the booktubeathon that isn't the booktubeathon anymore. I don't even know what it's called. We picked it, okay, hold on. Macbeth? That's not what I wanted. Okay, you know, that's what I get for trying to be extra. I pick Macbeth. Of course I pick Macbeth. I was like, maybe I'll get like Sherlock Holmes or Anne of Green Gables, which I have like five more of, you know, something fun. Here I am with Macbeth. I guess this is the other classic I'm going to try to read this month because I'm trying to be out here being extra. That is all. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you read any of your books that I mentioned in this video down below. I would love to know your thoughts, whether we agree, disagree, any of that. I always love to know that. And I hope you guys are enjoying this 
new high definition. I know just by looking at me that I'm enjoying this high definition. So you must be enjoying it. Um, so that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope I shall see you in the next one. Bye.